Hello, Quakers, and welcome back to the Quake Pro League. After a week-long hiatus, we're back, ready to deliver even more Quake action with a stage-free kickoff. A little bit different this time around, as I'm joined by an amazing man, Flea. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. How about you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Obviously, we've had a bit of a bit of downtime, about a week since yep. Poland, when Rafa was crowned champion. Say crowned, more of belted. But we're back. We're ready for more action, and it should be a very juicy season with our new challenges we have coming in. Oh, absolutely. There's a lot of new interesting players in the mix. The only Quake Pro that managed to retain his position was actually Krum. Mm -hmm. Everyone else dropped places with one of the new challengers making their way into the Pro League, so there's definitely some new blood to spice things up. Oh, yeah. Let's have a little bit of a talk about that as well, because sure. if you miss Katowice, it was incredible. In terms of a Quake clan, I feel like it was one of the best we've had in quite some time. It was prestigious, it was huge, the stage looked beautiful, you look beautiful. Thank you. But more importantly, the games were just miraculously good base with yeah. the upset of a lifetime coming third that was a huge storyline i mean yeah base is someone who's been performing pretty well online but on land he just historically hasn't been able to really bring it and show his best performance so for him to make top three is absolutely amazing yeah it was huge rafa as well undefeated yeah. throughout the entire tournament decimating everyone what three o's and the grand final again the four a win with a one map advantage not a single map dropped not a single one and he mentioned it he hadn't done that in a decade and it's so rare to see it happen in such a hotly contested quake tournament where so many of the pros are playing at the best of their skill yeah it was huge you could see him on stage obviously after winning when he gave his interview he was just so happy to be able to come back to IEM and smash his way through with such a dominant performance anyone else that really stuck out to you over the course of the event Flea? I mean perhaps not in the positive line but there's mm -hmm. a few players such as for example Cooler I think yeah. a lot of viewers were expecting great things from after all he was our stage 1 grand champion right but now he didn't even manage to win a single match it was crazy. He did drop out, but he is still in the league. So why don't we have a look at the schedule and see who is going to be competing over the course of the day. Of course, some familiar faces returning, but also some new additions as well. Up first, Cypher versus Cooler. Two gigantic legends of Quake Flea. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you've got Cypher, who back in the days of Quake Life was one of the top two in the entire world, was between him and Rafa. And he obviously has made some waves coming back into the Pro League, beating Rafa in that unforgettable semi final during the stage one finals. And then, of course, Cooler, the man, the king himself, an absolute legend of a player, hoping, of course, to make his mark and reclaim the belt. Yeah, moving on from that, you'll see Zeniku as well, now firmly finding his feet in the Quake Pro League after moving up through challenges, facing off versus Nosfer. Potentially a spicy affair. Then another two greats, Kilsen and Tox, is our third game of the day. Yep, that's also going to be a very interesting one. Kilsen has, during basically the entire Pro League, manifested himself as the absolute number one player on the EU side of things, whereas Toxic, another titan of old, has somewhat been struggling trying to find his balance, so very interesting matchup there as well. Mm, the North American bust up towards the bottom as well of our fourth game of the night as Dewey will take on Chain, who had the upset win over Cooler to knock him out of the tournament in Poland. There is another four games as well coming up later on in the evening as we will have eight of them in total tonight. So a whole lot of Quake. So you better get yourself strapped in as we'll have Sib taking on De Hang later on. Yeah, that's also an interesting one. Sib, a player who ended up dropping out of the Pro League after the first stage, managing to claw his way back in, beating Wes at the finals back in Poland. And now he immediately has got a huge challenge ahead of him. The Hang, more or less the uncontested number two of NA, is looking to face him down. Yeah, the Liquid Lunatics. Hopefully they'll provide us with some exciting antics. Base, there he is, finally. I know everyone from CIS will be excited to yep. see him. He dominated in Poland, but he faces off versus Wenger, and that will be no easy feat for him tonight in the Quake Pro League. Moving on as well to the Young Guns, the hot heads of the Maestro Mandem. Razy taking on Zron, Flea. Yeah, Kron, I think, is a player who has so much potential but hasn't really been able to bring it and show us exactly what he's capable of during the online phases of Stage 2. Whereas Razy, I mean, the man has been taking some names left and right, made it all the way to the grand finals in Katowice, where he unfortunately went down against Rafa, but these are, again, two amazing players. Yeah, and invoking that name will bring him out. Rafa will be facing off versus Effortless in our last game of the night. So there's a whole lot of Quake and a whole lot of legends competing tonight. I feel like we're really in for a treat this season. We've got some great new up-and-comers that have come in through challenges, and it's all culminating for what should be a huge season here in Stage 3. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the main narratives or storylines going into this stage is going to be who can put a dent in the beast that is Rafa. Mm. Didn't drop a single map showing himself to be better than many people ever thought he was capable of. And I really think that the question on everyone's mind is who can beat Rafa? Is there even anyone who could beat Rafa? Yeah, that is true. But that'll be up towards the end of the night. For now, let's look back at the present and delve into our upcoming game. Of course, kicking us off here will be Cypher versus Cooler. As we said, two genuine legends of Quake. So much history, so much to try and dissect here as well. It's going to be hard, but let's give it a good go. Bust out that knife and tell me about Cypher. Well, I mean, Cypher, one of the most talented players ever to grace the noble game that is Quake. The man has been playing for years and has got the results to back it up as well. He's got amazing aim, he's got the infamous rockets from Belarus, and his just in-game battle sense and understanding of Quake is, is essentially unrivaled. Oh yeah, he can do so much. Genuinely explosive when he gets going. I feel like at times we do see confidence being a bit of a question, but hopefully yep. he starts to believe in himself again and really truly you know, live that Cypher mentality, he could decimate. So much skill still lives on inside this man. Oh yeah, and I mean, we've seen it, right? The Stage 1 Finals, I mentioned it earlier, the match against Rafa. So many people had already pinned Rafa as the champion, right? As one of the main contenders for the title. And then Cypher comes up out of challenge, he's like, no. Nah. No, no, I'm going I'm to put a stop to this right here and right now. So he definitely has got amazing potential. Oh, he does indeed. Potential, though, is also what we need to see return from Cooler. He picked up his LAN win in Luka and then unfortunately fell short, coming out so early into the tournament in Katowice that everyone was shocked. Chain decimated him, tossed him to the side, and now he's back in looking to avenge himself in Stage 3. Can he do it, Flea? I mean, that's another good question, right? Because he didn't just lose against Chain. First off, he lost against Avec. So it's it's going to be interesting to see how his mental state adapts to those two losses, especially since he fell from the highest of highs mm -hmm. to essentially the lowest of lows. Now, clearly, he's a player who's got tremendous experience and skill, so I do think he'll be able to work his way back up. But I think a lot of people are going to be interested in seeing what shape Cooler is in today. Yeah, that's probably the biggest question, right? Is the asterisk of how much has changed since Poland back in? Is he refreshed? Is he feeling ready to rumble? Are we going to see any adaptation to his play style as well? Because in Poland, obviously, you know, asking him on stage, did he feel comfortable? Everyone was touting him as now the best of the best again. And he, he gave a sort of, you know, smug look as he does and, and said he would play his best. And unfortunately, it just wasn't good enough at the event. Yeah, no, it isn't. And it's going to be very decisive, I feel like, how he performs in these early weeks, rather, of stage three to see how he shapes up for the rest of the entire stage. Yeah, he's really going to need to bring his Absolutely, yeah. It's a hard opposition to start with as well. Cypher as your opening game of the tournament. I feel like if there is someone that's going to come in and potentially steal an upset, Cypher would be that player. Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's definitely not as if Gouler is getting thrown a softball right no. now, right? After his loss at the Stage 2 Finals, he's going up against Cypher, none other than the man from Belarus himself. So he's really got to work for it today. Oh yeah, it is going to be an absolute brawl once these two get on the server. A bit of a bust up. It will uh, definitely be a bit of a spicy one, but... What are your initial thoughts on this series? Let's start getting into the nitty-gritty between yeah. them both. Well, I mean, I think Cooler, his, his playstyle is very famous, right? He really tries to deny his opponent every single thing on the map. That's why some people consider him like a Pac-Man, a boa constrictor. He will just run circles around you and take every single item on the map, leaving you with absolutely nothing left. Mm -hmm. Whereas Cypher, I feel like, is a much more inventive player, you know, like he just, he makes his way into the scene and then he just, he figures out on a case-by-case -case basis, what am I supposed to do here, what is the best playstyle, and he can really just throw off people with these very clever and unexpected plays. Interesting stuff. So potentially the clash of the play styles there could actually be quite yep. a key storyline to take away from this one. If you viewers at home are interested in this game and do have your own opinions as well, hit us up on Twitter. That's hashtag Quake Pro League. We want to see what your thoughts are on what should hopefully be a huge kickoff to stage free fleet. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I the games that we're seeing today, oh, this yeah. is some stuff that you would see in the semi-finals, the grand finals of these major lands, but we're getting them here today for free. Completely free of charge. We've done very well with this uh, oh, yeah. this matchup with the round robin. I think today actually has quite a few stack games the whole way through. So, uh, you know, if, if you're interested, definitely keep it locked over the entire course of the evening because there is a whole lot of Quake to come. And all of these matches are going to be pivotal as well because it's the start of the season. The points are now doubled as well. So it's going to be eight points for a map win. So there is so many up for grabs that you want to come in early. And if you can, try and snatch away those free O's. 
Oh, absolutely. And especially towards the start of the stage, it's going to be... We're, we're probably going to see quite a bit of moving in the ranks, right? Mm -hmm. With the points all of a sudden being increased the way that they are, I think we can see a lot of volatility, a lot of players that are more towards the bottom of the bracket. If they play well and get themselves one or two trios, even they can instantly shoot up so high oh, in the yeah. ranking, overtake a five, ten amount of people even. So, uh, But on, with that being said, we're going to take a look at the picks and the bands that are available to us as well. Yeah, we do have that veto ready, so let's start breaking this one down as we have our champion picks. Fleet, what immediately sticks out to you? Immediately sticking out to me, Corrupted Keep. We're going to see Cypher running the Sorleg versus the Galena. Pretty standard picks, I would say, there. Although, one of the things that does stand out to me is Cooler banning Slash right there, because Slash definitely isn't the champion you see on Corrupted Keep all that often. Uh, so maybe he was just trying to get rid of her for one of the later maps. Second one being Blood Run, picked by Cypher, where we're going to see the Visor versus the Nyx. Nyx, of course, he's got the mobility, whereas the Visor has got the information and is in many ways a hard counter against that Ghost Walk. This actually shapes up to be a fairly exciting series. I think we do have the classic yin and yang, right, on Blood Run, a standard matchup that's been true and tested yep. throughout time and time again with the Nyx and Visor, as you said. When we get into Blood, that's where I feel like things get a little bit more exciting. Doom coming out from Cypher, we know how good his movement is already. Yep. And then you couple that with Doom with a passive, that's going to be fun. Absolutely, and Cypher, we mentioned it time and time again, his rockets are absolutely infamous, and by playing Doom Slayer, he's giving himself that extra little bit of height, the verticality to land even more damage with that tool of destruction, whereas Cooler has decided to go for the Strog, so he's got a little bit more horizontal speed with the Crouch Light that the champion has now, as well as being able to use the Peeker to do some cheeky damage here and there. Athena being banned, I think that really shouldn't surprise anyone. We have no. seen a lot of the girl come out to play back at the stage two finals. She's clearly a force to be reckoned with, and especially on a map like Blood Covenant. Yeah, I think Athena, actually, in terms of a potential meta shift, yeah. she was the biggest stepping stone in that that we saw over the course of all of Poland. Yeah. So many games where she was a pivotal pick, even for Rafa, we saw Sib playing her. She was coming out left, right and centre, and then eventually over the course of that event, we started seeing her being hard banned out. So I think people have really started to realise Athena has to be on the radar now. I mean, she just has so many useful ways in which you can uh, deploy her, and one of the main ones, I feel like, was how Rafa countered Razy's clutch yes. by playing Athena, right? Because Razy's clutch, he's widely considered to be the single best clutch player in the entire world. It's such a threat, almost everyone bans the robot against him straight away, but Rafa just outmaneuvered him consistently by using the Athena grappling hook, which you can use essentially three times in a row. Yeah. He just consistently denied every single hourglass on the map, ensuring that Clutch can't pop that shield of his, and when he does have the shield up, Rafa was just like, oh, well, you know what? I'm just going to hook straight out of the room, and you're not going to be able to catch me. Yeah, it was incredibly smart. So good to see Athena actually getting a little bit more limelight. And also, I think that's one of the key takeaways, is the longer the Quake Pro League has now gone on, now being in Stage 3, we've seen way more versatility with all of our pros. Everyone is actually expanding their hero pool a little bit more. We're seeing more champions come out right. than ever before, which is a nice position to be in. I feel like the meta is really starting to develop, even over the course of just this season alone, Flea. Oh, absolutely. I think when we look back at the Stage 2 Finals, we saw pretty much every single champion being played. Mm. I think one of the only ones that really didn't get that much love is Death Knight. Yeah, the DK just isn't really in the meta right now because he's so situational. There's only a handful of maps that you can really make use of him. But if you look at everyone else, we saw Nyx, we saw Slash, we saw the Keel, we saw Sorlek. Oh, yeah. Every single champion you can essentially think of was played. Yeah, even a couple of uh, bull rushes coming through. Oh, yeah. There was a whole lot of spice that was sprinkled into that event. So it was it was exciting to see. You know, I know a couple of them caught off ZSX, but that's not really hard to do, is it? <laughs> I guess not, no. no. Poor Dan. No, no. Rest in peace, Dan. Free Dan. Free Dan. Free Hashtag Dan. Free Dan, yeah. I'm curious to see if there is actually going to be a, a free brick equivalent into this season. Because oh. what was it? Free Genic, essentially. Genic, I think, didn't pick up a map over the course of stage two. Unfortunately not. Mm. No, he, he tried his hardest, but I feel like he was just a little bit outclassed. You know, he yeah. did very well during the Challengers League, being the very first to qualify for the stage two final matchups. But then he just kind of fell short during the actual Pro League itself. Yeah. So, obviously, with our new challenge as well, potential some... Uh, 
I don't know, may, maybe one of them will uh, will either really surprise us or unfortunately draw the short store. But the one chance they do have is with the benefit of the points now being doubled is obviously they really could start to jump forward. Yep. Uh, I think obviously Zenaku in the position he's in, if he does actually take a 3-0 series, he could leapfrog his way up, really start to gain some momentum, which is direly needed due to the fact he'll be taking over that spot and obviously remaining the points from stage two. Yeah, another person that I think could really benefit from that is Sparty, right? Yeah. He managed to knock out his opponent, CM and that who defeated him back in the relegation the matches at the flop. end of stage one. Yeah, so it was just, it was all about revenge, you know. I talked to Sparty after a tournament and he was basically like, you know, I came here mainly for one thing and that was to to get my revenge, to get back into the Pro League, to show exactly what I'm capable of. And now he's back in. He's back on the EU side. We're not going to see him play today because he's got his bye week right off the bat. But clearly he's a very skilled player. And with the points having changed again, yeah. there's definitely some opportunity for him to make some waves. Oh yeah, I think MVP of the tournament as well for pure meme factor Sparty with a hoodie that he had that oh, was man. just outraged I mean you know the backstory to that I, that of course, thing's just incredible yeah, yeah you're free to share it though no 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 I, I want you to tell me this is, this is some quake law that I feel needs to come straight from your mouth well, I mean, as far as I understand it, right, basically there was a picture taken of Sparty. It might have been at PGL 2017 in a hotel lobby where he was essentially standing like that. And somehow that picture went viral, especially over towards Asian countries in Japan. And people just started memeing it and they started cutting out Sparty's shape and putting him in all sorts of crazy <laughs> situations like Photoshop battles. And he just embraced it. And there's still a very active Discord that is entirely just built Sparty. around Sparty memes with that position. And so for him to come up, everyone else wearing their, of course, their esports, their fancy little jackets yeah, and everything. Yeah. And Sparty just shows up and he's like, now I've got a picture of myself on my hoodie. He's so. literally just a grey hoodie with yeah. that picture that's now ingrained in quite lore forever. Absolutely. Absolutely ridiculous. And then we had Zron with his cat on a mouse mat. Yeah. That blew my mind. The fact that that's literally just his dedicated go-to mouse mat is his cat. Just blown across the mouse mat. Yeah, the man clearly loves his pet. I think it was extremely funny to see when you saw the camera pan over oh, it for yeah. the first time. We were just like, hang on, hang on. Can That's we just, see that mouse pet again? Is that just a cat? Yeah. It was. It, it was, was amazing. Yeah, because I, I, I later found you know the the original picture on his Instagram and was like, wow. So he just he just really liked that picture of his cat and went for it. And oh, it, it provided him some good luck over the course of the tournament. Yeah. You know, He managed to stay in. Yeah, it kept him going. So maybe, maybe that was all he needed. A little bit of momentum from his pet. Yeah, and hopefully he can like really show us what he's capable mm. of during this stage, right? Because he's a very talented player. He's got so much capacity, but he just like he keeps flip flopping. You know, mm. he beats some of the absolute best players in the world sometimes in a very convincing fashion, and then the next week he's going up against someone where you think like you know this should be a match that Kron can win, yeah. and then he just drops out zero to three. So he really hasn't been very consistent when it comes to the Quake Pro League. And I know, like everyone knows, if he can put in the time and the dedication, I really can do that right mindset he could yeah, do yeah. so many great things i think consistency is probably one of the biggest question marks we have of a lot of our returning yeah. challengers like even if you throw sib into that list there's so many of them where it's like we know you can do fantastic things but we just haven't seen it come through now there has been a bit of a development what we're going to do is move straight into our second game of the evening as cypher has not arrived for our opening match so we'll see how things develop with that but for now let's go straight on into our second game flea so put everything that was in your mind to side cypher yep. and cooler remove that put that over here and now grab this bubble which is Nosfa taking on Zenaku. So the funder from Down Under, we were talking about our challenges before, the storylines panned out. Oh, absolutely. And Nosfa will be the one to take him on. So Zenaku is a player who tried to get into the uh, the Challengers League during the very first stage, but unfortunately with the time zones and everything, it didn't really work out, wasn't possible for him. But with some changes to the rules in stage two, he managed to qualify and make his way into the Quake Pro League. He's mm. one of Australia's very best. Unfortunately, Australia isn't that big when it comes to having top tier pro players like himself so it's going to be interesting to see how with that limited amount of practice he will be able to perform within the, the, the gods of Quake. Well see that's the hard part right it's obviously coming from a region like that your competition's limited the scene as well is going to be a bit of a struggle for him yeah. so many issues that could hold him back but let's find out we do have the picks and bands so we'll see if at least the champions are going to be on his side what are we thinking Flea? First map Awoken we've got the Galena versus Doom BJ being banned 
band. That's an interesting band, not one you see all that often. And then immediately afterwards, the scale band for Molten Falls. Nosefun knows what's up. We're going to see Keel being played versus Ranger. That's actually very interesting. Mm. Keel is not a champion you see all that often on Molten Falls. He no. isn't very fast. He's quite a big and easy target. And his ability works best at close range in these tight winding corridors and doorways. And Molten Falls has quite a lot of open spaces. So not really a pick that I would expect. No, I'm actually quite interested about that. I feel like Molten really could be quite an exciting one. If you've gone in that early with a keel pick, yeah. not only will Nos will probably be a bit caught off guard by it, but Zeniku must have a set game plan. We saw some fantastic keel plays at the Stage 2 final. Will this continue here? It's going to be a bit of a question mark, but we'll see. And then finally on Sarnath, Visor going out versus the Slash. Pretty standard stuff, really, towards the end of the video. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Visor is a very strong champion of Ruins, of Sarnet especially, whereas Slash, I mean, the lights on Ruins, they can be extremely strong, but the moment they are out of control, it is so difficult for them to get back into the game because whoever is in control and can just sit on that center part of the map can basically dominate every single portion of ruins and it's so difficult to even go for these small armors right because mm. you're you're essentially really exposed no matter if you try to go for the top one or the bottom one you have to put yourself out there just to get a small armor and you open yourself up to taking a lot of rail damage or being trapped oh yeah so it's going to be very difficult for zenaku if he ever gets out of control to cooperate with that. Especially towards Mega, right? We see so many opportunities where you have to go for a risky play to get that major item and just get shredded by constant yeah. tags from the rail because it's, it's so open. There's just nothing you can do. Yeah, there's absolutely no place to hide. There's a few places where you can retreat to, but when you're a light champion, you already have such a limited amount of stack. You can get caught out and destroyed like that. Mm, it can be rough for you. Let's start to talk a little bit about Nosfer as well because Nosfer, I feel like actually surprised to me, he didn't have the best run at the Stage 2 Finals. When in reality, I feel like he, he had a lot to prove online. Yeah. It seemed like he was going from strength to strength as well, but it just fell flat. I mean, Nosfar really showed himself as one of the better players on the American side of the brackets, taking maps and wins mm. of some of the best players in the entire world. But this time, I think he just he really had a disappointing showing. And you could tell by talking to him that he felt the same way. He wasn't happy. He wants to show that he's capable of so much more, but he just fell short and lost both of his matches right off the bat, dropping out very quickly in the at the Wits finals. Yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment. So hopefully he can come back in and really show that incredible caliber of skill he has. He provided us with so many highlight frags throughout yeah. the entire season. If you want someone that's flashy, I think Nosfer is your man. Oh yeah, absolutely. And he's just such a positive and enthusiastic person to be around. You know, oh, he yeah. really just brings the atmosphere up to a higher level. He's got confidence, he's got the skill, and he really isn't afraid to show that off. Mm. Someone else that needs to show off that skill is going to be Zenicula. This is your debut you in Quake Pro League. He did damage in challenges, and obviously yeah. that worked out when we got to the finals because he was able to come in, stole away that spot. Now this is your opening game. Obviously, with the points being doubled, the stakes are huge. Going up versus Nosfer as well. If you want to be able to prove something, this would probably be the game to do it in. Absolutely, but it's going to be a very difficult showing. Nosfer has is one of the heaviest hitters in mm. the entire Quakes. You know, right? His combat skills, especially in those close quarters, are essentially unrivaled. The man packs an absolute maddening punch, and so it's going He's to be got very the difficult for it. Yeah, he sure does. <laughs> Zanaku, of course, swole himself, but uh, mm. it's going to be interesting to see if he can bring that in the game as well. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup to see the form and the shape that Zanaku is in when he tries to go head-to-head -to, -head to some of the best players in the world. Yeah, I, I think what this is at the very least is just a fantastic benchmark for both of these boys yeah. throughout stage three, right? Because everything aside, land results to, to one corner as well. If we're looking at it fresh coming into stage three, there's a lot on the line between them both. Confidence is going to be a major point, but in terms of just combat skill and how they change, maybe in that small space of time we've had is going to be the bigger picture. This is more finally get to grips with that, because obviously there has been a weak downtime. You know, potentially we've got a little bit of players traveling, getting back into their routine. How much of yeah. this has now been spent, you know, starting to work through again with scrims, getting those 1v1s on the go and actually being able to get back in the arena and warm up? Or what have they been doing in that downtime fleet? That's going to be the big question. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We can't forget that the Stage 2 finals were just a week ago, yeah, Jackie. It's it not feels been long. No, it absolutely hasn't been long at all. So these players haven't had a whole lot of time to prepare to maybe analyze, download their opponent. So it is definitely going to be an eye-opener, I feel like, 
and as you said, a benchmark to see mm. how they are going into stage three. Yeah, we, we could learn potentially an awful lot from this game once we get underway with this one. It should be a juicy affair. If you are just joining us, it's the Quake Pro League where we're going to be kicking off with our second game of the day, which should be fairly exciting. It's Nos for taking on Zeniku. It's three maps, and there is eight points on the line for each of them. We are ready to begin the game as well as we will kick this one off. It should be absolutely fantastic. Let's see who's going to be taking the first win of stage three of the Quake Pro League as we'll delve into the action in a matter of seconds. For now, enjoy our uh, our faces before we get into the game. We're teasing them. We're yeah, trying we're to really build them. up the hype for this one. I mean, you got it, right? The mm. players, they, the viewers at home, they want to see something and we're just we're just teasing them a little bit. We're like, oh, yeah. oh, we're going to get into game. No, 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 not just yet. Not not yet. Just, yet. just not wait yet. wait a moment. Wait a moment while we deal with some technical issues. Uh, we're waiting for everyone to get at it. You know, it's it's still early in the afternoon. Absolutely. Some people could be asleep. There's Quake gamers. You know, we, we know what it's like. You have a, have yeah. a long night of getting some Insta gib in. You might want a little bit of extra kip. And of yeah, course, of course, our NA audience, right? It's yeah, yeah. it's quite a time difference depending on where you live in NA. So uh, some of the people might just only be getting up. It's still early there. So uh, if you're just joining us, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a nice little drink. We're about to get into our match between Zeniku and Nosu as soon as we deal with some minor technical issues. And then we're going to kick things off for stage three for reals. Yeah. For real this time. For when, reals. When we're ready. When we're ready. We'll, we'll keep you updated. It should be a bit of a blast. Obviously, it's a shame because, you know, if this was Poland, we'd have all the boys with us, all, all the lads. They're gone. Catch up. Where is he? He's he's away. Dan. Yeah. Dan, Dan. Who's Dan? ZSX. ZSX who? ZSX who? I mean, ZSX, he barely even fits. I like, don't think, on, we, on I don't screen, think we could right? physically get him in between. No, I don't think so. He point. would, like, just muscle yeah. both of us off We need an entire camp. dedicated desk just for Dan. <laughs> There's no way he'd... Uh, it's slot in between the spice. Maybe catch up. Catch up would fit. Catch yeah. up would fit. Oh, looks like we are about to jump right back into the game. And guys, this is going to be a juicy one. We've got Nosfa. We've got Zanaku in our first real matchup of the day, starting things off with Nosfa and his Galena. Here we go. Let's catch up with these two and see how they have been doing. It's a 1 0 scoreline already, nearly two minutes into the game. And that's the second found just as we hit two minutes. Nosfa fragging out with a shotgun out. Zanaku taken by surprise massively, it seems like. I don't understand why he was sticking around that long as Nosefa just barrels down towards him, building up speed on the Galena. Here we go. Good, solid defensive positioning at T. Does some defensive rockets. LG is coming out. Zanaku is in trouble. He needs to land some good rails right now. Oh, I don't think he had timing, but that's gonna do it. Hello, a rocket into the rail and Zanaku back on the board. Yeah, that's big. Zanaku keeping Nosefa at least arm's length for the minute. As he starts to tie it up, gets himself back into a better position. It's important for Zaneku right now that he doesn't give away the positioning, the foothold that he has on these major items. He's got to take this fight. He's got to be strong, but he said he is just going to back away. Hang on. That 70 damage rocket is going to make him change his mind. Wasn't expecting to do that sudden amount of damage. But he's now in a really good position to get some rotation going. Both Mega and Heavy have gone his way. It's going to help the Australian out a ton. Yeah, this is huge. For establishment of control, that's worked out fantastically for him. All off the back of one direct rocket. Let's see if he can directly start to take the lead now, though. Rail and rail again, as Nosfer is within inches of his demise flea. He has to fall back, as his stack is tiny. From what we've seen in this one minute of Zanaku footage, his aim has been on point, especially oh, yeah. those rails. He's even denying the small armors, really trying to catch and trap Nosfa in that small area. Here we go, Nosfa does get out, Zanaku looks away at just the wrong time, but again, Ooh. the hundo to the face, that's gonna make the Brazilian player think twice. Zanaku, can he chase him down? Looks like he doesn't want to go in full pursuit just yet. Of course, he's got plenty of time left to work with, so no need dead for these drastic measures. Take it slow. He might finally start to lose out on the full control here. Does at least get the Mega. Heavy's going to be back up in about eight seconds. Instead, opts to try and take the fight, and it won't matter much because he hits the rocket straight into the rail. Beautiful combo. And Nosfa is laid out, and he's still got complete control. The timing's flawless. This man must have a beautifully big watch. And that was a really good play from Zanaku. He had the opportunity to go straight for Heavy after that engagement, but instead he went over to the LG side of the map, expecting his opponent, Nosfa, to retreat to that side. But hang on, Ooh. the tribal has to be pretty good. Nosfa, is he going to push in? I don't think he will. Zanaku manages to get himself stacked up, but he has to surrender the Mega Health. Very important for him to keep those totems under control. The moment that his opponent gets three of those off, he gets a huge health boost, and that's something that Zanaku wants to avoid at all costs. 
At this point, for the past two minutes, it feels like Zeniku has literally just had every major item, and Nosfer can't get anything. There's no crumbs even for him to nibble on to try and sustain himself. He needs to do some damage soon here, Flea. We're coming up towards the halfway point of this opening map. Zeniku, rocket in hand. Not really overstepping the mark, but Nosfer will. Leaps in, had one HP left on his stack. Got absolutely obliterated. But Zeniku gets a taste of his own medicine. Has to fall back. This should surely be the opening frack in from Nosfer. And it will be from the Super Shotgun. I like the little punch there, though. At least getting 75 points of damage off on his opponent. That's a nice little gumbo from Nosfer. Nosfer was ready to leave the room. But he decides to come right back. This is a risky play. Lance the rail. Both players really low. What? The shoddy will do it. Seneku didn't have a close quarters weapon at the ready. And that'll be Nosfa extending his lead a little further. These fights have been so incredibly close when it comes to stack as well. Both of them have pretty much been mirror image for a lot of it. And the super shotgun is really getting some love tonight. Seneku perhaps a little too careless with his positioning, I feel like. This is the second or third death we've seen where he was basically caught out in a place where he didn't have to be, and Nosfa just took him completely by surprise and rushed him down instantly. So uh, perhaps Seneku thing to focus on is his defensive positioning moving into the last minutes of this map. We're about halfway through. Unfortunately, as well for Zeniku, he's gone from the king of control to just the jester at this point. Two frags to Nosfa's five. Another fight could come out here soon as Nosfa is starting to establish even more map control. Picks up the heavy. A bit of a struggle when it comes to connecting the rails, though. Yeah, it's definitely Zeniku that's been doing most of the rail damage this time around. He does have to retreat, though. Rocket won't connect a thing, and Nosfa once again solidifying his control over the map. Mega will be going his way, looping around, trying to get positioning on Heavy as well. And there we go. I think that's the first totem we're seeing being placed in a cheeky position today. Excellent, Rocket Zeniku. Caught out in a bad spot once again. Just a tiny little bit of shotgun damage will finish it. I'm loving the chase from Nosefa. There we go. This should be a frag at any cost. Beautiful. Instead of trying to just retake control of the center area of the map, Nosfa just chased him down, knowing exactly how low his opponent was. Zaniku, this is a bit of a Hail Mary. Oh. Now, the Mega. The Mega. If it hadn't been picked up, Zaniku had a really good chance of taking that one away, but uh, fortunately for him, didn't quite go that way. It actually makes me so happy that we're seeing more and more utilization of the Super Shotgun. I mean, you don't need to, though. If your rail's going to be that on point from a distance like that, you might as well pick him to pieces. And he keeps on going! He's bouncing around corners and leaving Zeniku laid out on the ground. This is a strong showing of Nosfa. He's sending a message with these plays at the start of Stage 3, showing that, yeah, okay, the finals, they weren't my best performance, but I'm going to do more Ooh. as he pins his opponent up against the wall and says, see you later. That's how you die. Flea made him look like Mary Poppins. Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. That is just disgusting All from needs, Nosfa. All he needs is a little umbrella to complete the picture, but Nosfa right now, two minutes left on the clock, he's got a huge lead, and those commanding rockets are gonna make the Australian think twice. Zeniku, how is he going to be able to deal with that? Looking for some desperate tribal damage. It does a decent amount, but Nosfa still has that mega health behind him. He's just gonna go back around and pick it up. Nosfa, another frag could be coming his way. As he starts to delve a little bit deeper, firing out the warning rockets, no connection just yet. A little bit of tag damage done, switches out to the LG as he leaps his way towards Zeniku. It's an awkward fire fight where no one's really doing too much damage right now, but this is where things could really start to turn hectic. Drops the totem to try and deny the push from Zeniku, gets into a bit of a better spot. But still no frag found. That was a wasted opportunity for Zaneku. That fight really should have gone his way. He had control, or rather the better positioning. Nosfa was down there really not all that super stacked compared to his opponent. And he had the wrong weapon out, missing rail after rail. Zaneku had the opportunity to land down the rockets, but he just missed Ooh. almost all of his damage. And I think now it's going to be very tricky. He needs to land this rail. He needed that shot. Impressive. Wow. Now. Nah. One minute one minute left to go. I don't really see this one happening anymore. Zaneku, he needs a miracle. Especially just the fact it's so hard for Zaneku to even get into a close position to get a frag here. Because at first, Zaneku was just being a lunatic with the railgun. Now Nosf has been so effective at just prodding and keeping him at a distance. He doesn't want to actively overstand because Zaneku just has no stack flea. 
Yeah, and he needs to make a push. Zaniku, he has 30 seconds left to do anything with these rockets. They need to be phenomenal. That's good, but oh no! <laughs> no, Svan says, you've got some good rockets, but let me show you mine as he puts the final nail in the Australian coffin and that's going to secure him map one without a shadow of a dot. Yeah, this has got to be his now. Ten seconds remaining. There's nothing that can be done. Maybe just some style points for good measure. But Nosfar, he has turned up like an absolute style icon here to kick us off on Awoken. A dominating victory with an 11-2 to two frag count. That is just huge. Yeah, as I said earlier, he's making a statement. Nosfar saying, I am back and I'm going to take some names with me. Meanwhile, Zanaku, he's got some things to work on. His positioning, I feel like, really wasn't as good as it should have been. His aim looked really solid at the start when mm. we were on his perspective, but then it kind of went downhill towards the end, and then he just got, he just kept getting caught out over and over again. He had a few good opportunities, like I mentioned, with the rockets over at Heavy, but he just he wasn't able to close it down at all, and that left him in the dust of Nosfa. Yeah, I mean, into the early game, he was playing really nice Quake. The timing was good. He had good control, right? But he never really got a lead. Didn't really get his foot in the door. He was just playing. Ideally, obviously, it's the it's the classic cliche of saying yeah. he was playing not to not to win, but just playing not to lose, which exactly. came back to bite him because as soon as Nosfa got confidence, he played confident as ever. Zeniko, he needs some more of that confidence, and look at yeah. that, he did so many like he made some really nice plays, but Nosfa overall just dealt more damage when it mattered and had the better defensive positioning. I love this one though, the punch from below, that, that could have gone either on Sway if Nosfa had missed that final shot he lost, and it wasn't that easy one either. Like, see, this is what I'm talking about, Zaniku down there towards the heavy machine gun, and Nosfa just like an absolute madman comes yeah. and splurges through the doorway, <laughs> finishing him off when, when Zaniku was taken completely by surprise. Really good reads from Nosfa as well, like perfectly gauging his opponent and catching him out. Just the Brazilian was stronger. Yeah. In, in just about any way, I feel like. No, I prefer seeing Nosfa play like this. This is when he's at his best, when he's looking like the Brazilian brawler and he just goes out windmilling into every fight. It's when he really is at his best. He is so good at aggressive quake. And sometimes it feels like he dips out of that, puts himself in a box a little bit. But tonight, here on this opening map, he definitely showed that he can still live true to that mantra and walks away with a crushing win there, 11-2. to two. Yeah. A good start. Definitely a good start. I'm also just seeing some really solid positional and control play out of Nosfa as well. A lot of people kind of look at him as just the one who's got the combat mm -hmm, skills but mm -hmm. doesn't really have the brain to match. But I think that we saw some really good things, some very clever leads, excellent positioning. So Nosfa definitely stepping things up already. Yeah, we do need to see a turnaround, though, from Zeniku. Obviously, being his debut here throughout Quake Pro League history, really, if he's going to come in and start to make a name for himself, now will be the time to do so. He yeah. can still return to form. Obviously, it is three maps in this series. He could make it a 2-1 and get a majority of points, but time will tell. We step back in now of our second right. map of the series, Flea. Yeah, and this is the one that we were a little confused with the map picks, or the champion picks about rather, right? We're immediately seeing the keel put down a deadly net of grenades right there. Deterring Nosfar from pushing in any further. Oh, fumbling the weapons right there, Zaniku. Can't let that happen. That could have gone so, so wrong. Interestingly enough, though, Nosfar really delaying the mega health right there. 15 seconds between the items. He could be setting something up here. A huge rotation for himself. Curious to see if these pineapples are really going to pack a punch. He does try and open with one and does a little bit of initiation damage. Zeniku roaming around. He's got good positioning, still trying to get those tags off. But Nosfer instead looks like he might try and go a bit Hail Mary here. Tons of damage done. And Zeniku's now much worse for Werfly. Yeah, obviously that was the positional play again coming out of Nosfa. And the big problem for Zeniku right there was that he didn't have the item timing. Oh. Good defensive pineapples, good rockets as well. The rail! Oh, what? misses, and Nosfa actually finishing it off with a brilliant burst of heavy machine gun. This is not good for Zanaku, because look what Nosfa can do right now. Secure heavy, immediately position himself onto the mega as well. At least this time around, Zanaku has got a much better idea of when the item is about to spawn. But still, Nosfa, look at that. Beautiful stack, 175 to 100. Zanaku, even though he is the heavy champ, struggling right now. 
doesn't matter if you're heavy if you're not going to be able to find anything to actually assist you with. No items have been able to go his way, really. Could pick up the heavy here. And Nosfa, bouncing himself back, unfortunately, made it so. Zenaku will pick that up. He's in a good position. Nosfa, so lucky to be alive. With three HP left, retreats to grab at least some semblance of armor. Zenaku, he has to push in right now. He's got to take this. He does, but takes a bad rail for his efforts. Nosfa's doing an excellent job at calling his opponent's stack over and over again. So even when Zenaku manages to reclaim control, he still isn't feeling all that comfortable in it. He's got a good amount of health. We'll be picking up the armor as well. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. For the last three major items that Zenaku picked up, Nosa was there with a rail, a rocket, a nice little combo. And so far, Zenaku is still on around 100-100. This next mecha is going to be important, and Nosa has got the perfect angle to pick it up too. Good movement. Yep. Dodging the pineapples right now. Puts himself back up towards the higher ground as well as it seems like there is going to be a bust up for control of the heavy. It's up in three seconds and they're in close proximity. The opening rail doesn't quite connect, but he is going to steal away the item. And a little bit of the splash damage from the rocket sends Zenaku retreating over towards rail. No stop pushing in. Ooh. Out comes the orb, the LG to finish it up. He's just going to go after it with the super shotgun again. Oh, Hang on. No. The defensive rails are solid. Zanaku needs one more, but the rocket he dodges out just a moment too soon. And look at that. Look at the self-control on Nosfa. Going to f pick up the small health, the small armor before making a move on the Mega. That shows that he is comfortable and confident in his position. A smart play, a small detail, but one that definitely could help him out in the grand scheme of things. Does have to concede control of the heavy, but he's already basically stripped that Again. from Zenaku. Again, every single time Zenaku gets himself a major item, Nosefa is right there to deal the damage. And here we go, he's dropping in, doesn't want to wait for the small armor to spawn. The LG is solid, the nades do nothing whatsoever. And Nosefa extending his lead 3-0. This is not looking good for Zenaku. No. Nosfa just looks so, so dominant. It's crazy how impactful he's been. Smart read as well as he hears the audio cue, flicks up, doesn't land the second Beautiful. rail. Ooh, but the LG could spell defeat for Zenaku as he zaps his way through in a matter of seconds. Wow, still going, Flea. Nosfa's looking so good right now. The LG has to perform though, taking a lot of damage. Zenaku, is this his first track of the map? Yes, the nade will actually clean it up. This is time for the comeback. He's gonna pick up the mega health right now, but he's got a lot of frags to go. Only 100 health to work with zero armor. Takes another bad rail. Is he just gonna dive bomb on the heavy? Oh, too risky. Far too risky to go for that one. He just should have retreated because all he's doing is giving Nosfa a growing lead over him. And it's going to be very difficult to make a comeback happen because even if he gets control, his opponent is so much faster, so much more mobile than Hill. Kiel is slow, doesn't have any mobility abilities, whereas Nosfa, he's got the orb. Oh, nice little push. But the rocket to the face in the LG will send Kiel flying right back. That's fun. Nearly caught off by surprise there as Zeniku held the close angle, leaped up, but just got tapped by a little midi. Oh no, this could be so stylish as Nosfa sends himself flying with a rocket jump, slaps down onto Zeniku with a rail and looks to end it now with the <laughs> orb. And that will be all it took. The long distance orb for the win. Can't get enough of those, can we? And now Zeniku feeling a little bit desperate, perhaps. He had an opportunity. Noso was at exactly 90 points of health for a second right there, but he couldn't land the kill shot at the right time. Zeniku, he still has plenty of opportunities to make it happen, but he's got to start dishing out the damage, and dishing out the damage he does, as he's only four points behind now. Was going in as Zeniku looks to try and make fruit salad out of Nosfar. Fair bit of damage as he will be able to strip some of that stack, but he can't get through the doorway. He's just getting bounced back by all the splash damage, but it won't matter once you let him in. He goes full Tesla and strips the life from Nosfar. And he gets some mega for his troubles. Oh, that was another nasty rail. Zeniku, you're getting predictable. He's doing the same escape route for the first time right now. And Nosefa is really catching up to it with those good rails on the exit. Nice rockets, though. You need a little bit more. Can what? he do it? Can what? he do it? He does. He does. One more rail would have cleaned him up. And 
Sanaku escaping death once again. He's got to be careful there, though, because uh, Nosefa are hungry for more. I'm so surprised he's even actually got through that with his life. Literally by the skin of his teeth, Zoo. Yeah. Zoo, sorry. Zoo? <laughs> uh, my mind's cast it back to, uh, to stage two. I know we're both exceptionally handsome, but to clearly fair, there are some... You are both incredibly beautiful. Man. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. The rocket's coming out on top for Nosefa right there. Zanaku... Three frags down. This is far from impossible. There is still time, Jackie, now that we're on the topic. But he's got to make something happen. He's got to do it quickly, too. He really does, Flea. Tiptoes his way forward. Still got control over towards Mega. And it will be his. He claims it as his own. Denies the light as well. So at least he's still sticking to the systematics. He isn't getting overwhelmed in such a clutch position. Goes for the dive bomb in. It could have been the ring out. But instead, it's the rocket to the lips that sends Zenaku to the nether realm. Nosefa has been so good at denying these items. Zanaku, you need to win this. You need to get him, but he doesn't. Three points of health left for the Brazilian player. And Zanaku, his aim falls just short of making at least the start of a comeback happen. But uh, Nosefa, solidly in control. It will be Zanaku who will secure the... What? Okay, Zanaku. He will still secure the Mega Health. He left it up for an exceptionally long time. And time is something that he doesn't have much of right now, Jackie. No. He's falling into a horrible position. If he's going to get going, he needs to start now. He doesn't have much left to play with. And he's still getting left into a deeper and deeper hole as Nosfa just keeps on digging. Really good reads from Nosfa too. Every single time Zanaku is trying to go for an escape, Nosfa has a really good read on him and manages to do a decent amount of exit damage. Zanaku one rail, he needed two. And time is running out. Whatever he's got left to work with is dwindling fast. Zanaku, he does have control of the middle area. He will be able to secure the heavy, but he doesn't need items, he needs frags. You're absolutely right. Frags are the commodity right now. And he has to get his hands around a couple of them. He's not into a great position either. Time leaving him in such a dire spot. About a minute 30 left on the clock as it rapidly starts to go by. The tick ticking will be ringing in his ears. Nosfa, all he's got to do is stick to the basics now. Play it slow. Oh, and don't overextend too much. Some nice rail usage there from Zenaku, but he still needs so many more frags. Can he do it in the space of 60 seconds? I mean, theoretically, it's absolutely possible, but his skill pick is making it so much more difficult. He doesn't have speed. He doesn't have movement abilities. He doesn't have an orb. doesn't have a piercing sight. He's got nothing at all to to catch his opponent off guard with, to chase them down, to get the information that he needs. And meanwhile, as you just said, all Nosa is going to do is sit back, play the passive game, set up those defensive bursts of LG and Rail, and that's all he needs to do. Unless Senaku can find him right here, right now, and that is indeed what he will do. The rocket is pretty decent. Rail misses the mark. Senaku, you need to hit these shots. Finally landing some more damage. Oh! A moment Ooh. later, and that would have been... A clean kill for Zanaku, but the trade... If he had shot just a fraction of a second earlier, that would have been a hit before Heavy was picked up, and it would have been a frag. But at this point, it is too little, too late. Zanaku still going to get himself a few more frags on the board, but it is Nosa who will be taking home map two as well. It's a shame as well, because... <laughs> It's, it's always got to happen. It's the I, ledge, yeah, man. It I is know. the ledge. It literally has to happen pretty much every time we see it. And it happens again. Oh, I'm, I'm never going to get that out of my memory of the stage two finals as well. Just oh, straight off the ledge. I mean, that was that keel as well. Yeah. It was keel, right? It was keel on CNZ. Yeah, CNZ yeah, yeah. playing keel on that map and just... No, oh. don't even remind me. Don't no, remind you me. Reminded, leave, leave you reminded me. You reminded me. I don't know you're what you're about. Ridiculous stuff, though. Uh, Nosfa is looking fabulous out there. Yeah. It's so really far, good to see. I mean, his aim on point, his decision-making really solid, excellent positioning, and just his reads. Mm -hmm. I've mentioned this a few times. He's just consistently outthinking his opponent, knowing exactly where they're going to go. And his item denial game, even with mm -hmm. the small armors, consistently, every single time he passes by one of those, he includes the timing in his rotation, and he just keeps denying it to his opponents. I think that's quite an important part as well that sometimes everyone overlooks is the fact that no matter if your fragging game, your combat skills are top in the charts, you're hitting every shot, you still have to stay true to the basic mythology of Quake and be able to deny those pickups, 
base it around the major items and still stay really down to the core item timings. And that's what we saw. There was no break from the norm. Even though he was playing really flamboyant, flashy, aggressive Quake, he still stayed true to what he knew. Meanwhile, I think Zenoku is... He just made too many mistakes. And he made... He made basically the same ones over and over again. I don't understand why he was using heavy nail guns so often. Mm -hmm. You made the comment at the start as well, why he keeps going with the nails when there's better weapons available or when he should have been able to just go for them first. But he kept trying that. He chased in a few ways that I felt like were really predictable towards the end. I started calling them out myself, like, Zeneco, I know what you're gonna do beforehand, so no doubt that Nosefa does the exact same thing. And overall, again, just outclassed more or less in the same way as we saw on map one. It's true. You did pose the question that if potentially playing inside of the uh, oceanic scene, if that could have held back his potential development as a player, and maybe that's not in the sense of his combat skills, but in the sense of his rotations yeah. and the way that he navigates around the map going for his escape routes, when it comes down to it in those moments, you can see that Nosfa always had his number. His combat skills, they're definitely good enough, right? That's not an issue. I think that's pretty obvious from the few displays of skill and aim we've seen come out of Zeneku. But as you mentioned, the positioning, just being ready to deal with whatever his opponent is throwing at him, he just isn't quite at the same level as Nosefa is just yet. No. Time will tell, though. It's early doors into the season yet, and this series is not over yet as well. He still has a chance to at least grab some points and right. deny, most importantly, the full stack going the way of Nosfa. And, I mean, we've got to be realistic too, right? Even if Zeneku doesn't really do well today, or mm -hmm. maybe next week or the week afterwards, we have seen some incredible progression come out of players yeah, the longer yeah. they are in the Pro League, right? Because they're incentivized to play every single week against the top players in the world and to practice and to grind and to improve in ways that they really haven't been able to do any time before the Quake Pro League, so for Zeneku to now be a part of this, it's really only going to hone his skill, boost his potential, mm. and I really expect him to improve and progress majorly towards the end of Stage 3. Yeah, I mean, it's sustained practice as well, because there's so much, obviously, 10 weeks of competition, there's a lot to learn over the course of Stage 3. Also, you have a major assisting item in the fact that now he's competing in these high-level professional games where everything is commentated, everything is available online. He can watch back those thoughts, yep. see where he's going wrong, and use that as an incredible learning tool looking back at it but now it's time for our third map in the series let's delve into this one flea one final time yep ruins of sarnad zanaku on the slash it's going to be interesting first light champion i feel like we're seeing today Ooh, no. okay a little bit sick really really don't know what happened there is Zenigo having some sort of issue right there I don't know why he didn't just slide right off the room why he didn't decide to do anything at all he just went down quickly as Nosefa pelted him with that heavy machine gun yeah he's just out there paintballing apparently really just painting a, a bit of a masterpiece I'm in Louvre with that one as it was his Mona Lisa Get all the art jokes in now. Frame it and put it on the wall. But come on, oh, Zaniku, you can do better and actually make some frags happen as well. Two for one. Here we go. Another engagement. Nosefa, his stack is just incredibly tall right now. And Zaniku knows that there's nothing he can do against a champion that not only has a higher base tag than he does, but also has control of all of the major items. Zaniku, right now, he needs to get himself stacked up on the small armors, get the weapons he needs, and then take the fight to his opponents. Rockets are pretty good. He can actually secure himself the Mega. There we go. Zaneku, perfect place. He needs to pressure a little bit more, I feel like, though. That's a bit of a missed opportunity. Knocking his opponent that far out of the room. I feel like he should have pressured more. Yeah, especially that when you now have the tables being turned as well with the advantage in the stack. You secured the Mega. You got it to a great spot, but there was no capitalization. Okay. That was a nice rocket. That was really clean. This booped him so far back as well. Zeniku's now got the mobility to chase here. You're on that slash. Go in. See if you can try and pick him to pieces. Oh, not with a fake. I was almost thinking like, yeah, no, rockets are not the right choice for that engagement. You need a railgun. And I think Nosa thought the same thing. And then that long distance rocket just homed in on him for the boop. A lot of damage coming out right now. Yeah, the Australians got heat seekers. Yep. Zaneku right now in control of the items, got a very solid rotation going on that's going to help him a lot. And Nosa is playing the defensive game, doesn't want to engage, hoping to just maybe fire off a good rocket or rail here and there as he gets himself right up to that base max stack of 100-100. And here we go, he's making a move for Mega Zaneku. Neither player doing any damage to the other right there. Heavy up in just a few seconds and Nosa still not confident enough 
to make a push for it. He's just gonna leave it to his Australian adversary. Oh, this could be an excellent trap. The rail is good from Zanaku, though. No, so it's gonna retreat. See, this is rough. It feels like Zanaku has had an actual lead to this game so many times, but hasn't been able to push, hasn't been able to actually capitalize on the damage he's done. Now, finally, we get into a fight where Nosfa still had a much worse stack, but he gets a shot off, completely strips everything that Zanaku had. He's taken a Mega again for, I believe, the fourth time this game. Let's see if this is where things are going to shift. Zanaku, he's got control of the items, but as you say, the damage just really isn't going his way. And even when he does manage to do a good amount of damage, his opponent just completely dodges it, gets away, outpositions him, outmaneuvers him, and does so much defensive damage that he changes his mind. Oof, missing a rail. That would have been a very nice shot to hit. Here we go, Nosa. Is, does he finally feel confident enough to go for heavy? It looks like it. He's got a good setup. Out of LG ammo, though. <laughs> It's a, it's a good thing he heard the click yep. before Zanaku decided to drop down because that could have easily spelled the disaster. Uh, the Australian, I feel like, is playing too much of a passive game right now. He's had opportunities, but he just hasn't done anything with him. That's that's literally hitting the nail on the head, right? It's the fact that he's done so much damage. He's had openers, but he's never gone to just try and punish from the back of it. And you're on Slash as well. Use yeah. that movement to your advantage. Absolutely. Instead of painting these beautiful paintings, just go like you're on the highway to hell and chase your opponent down. Nosfa will have to give up heavy this time around. I'm liking the strategy coming out of Nosa though. He just sets himself up to do so much damage. He's like, okay, I'm fine not picking up this armor. I still have got overstack from the previous rotation. Let me just see what I can do with my piercing side, some good rockets, some good rails. Technically, the thing is as well, he doesn't really need to overextend right now. Zenaku's not going in to fully try and punish. Nosfa's already got one frag on the board. Yep. All this is doing is just burning down the clock and playing into Nosfa's hand. Oh, this could be a further frag foul, though, as he starts to punish. Zenaku, that's your opportunity to attack? That's the one you go for? That was such a misplay, and he takes a bad rail upon respawn as well. But yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. Zanaku is becoming predictable. He takes the same... <laughs> he didn't even know he was there. He was looking straight down. But Zanaku is taking too many of these predictable routes over and over again. He runs the same cycle, picking up Mega, and then he drops down towards the eye, slides around the corner, and Nosa's gonna pick up on that. And Nosa knows, hey, I'm just gonna sit right here with my rocket and my LG. You're gonna come boiling down these stairs, and I'm gonna finish you off so quickly. And that's exactly what he's doing. It's good to have a couple of set rotation routes, but right now it feels like the ones that are coming through are just so easy to read for Nosfa yeah. that he's two steps ahead of the opposition, so he hasn't fallen into any traps. Zeniku just can't establish any, and now the tables have really turned. Nosfa's the one with control of the major items. Nosfa's the one that's tagging him and leaving him barely alive, dangling on a thread, but the difference is Nosfa can afford to have a misplay. He's the one with three fags already on the lead as he's picked him up in rapid succession. That was pretty good for Zanaku, though, just jumping over and doing a decent amount of damage with the Plasma Trail, actually. Not something we see very often in the Pro League at all. But now, Nosfa does for now have the better positioning, but the Rockets are better coming out of Zanaku. Can he find the rail? He does. Come on, Zanaku, can you punish? Or is he just gonna go for Mega? He does just pick up the Mega off, playing it safe, rather than be sorry, but again, deciding not to pressure at all. The matchup champion matchup is also a little difficult to chase Noise for down right now because Zanaku playing Slash is very unlikely to use his ability all that often which leaves so many hourglasses up for Noise for that he can just have his his piercing side up nearly constantly he just uses it and then he's got so many of the hourglasses to take away from that cooldown that he's got such a good read on his opponents. And the rails, they are fantastic. Zanaku again, the exact yep. same route, and it gets punished for it again. This is this is not looking good for the Australian. And again, going up that bounce fed to get out. Nosfa has his reading glasses on at the minute. Yep. And he knows exactly what Zanaku is up to. If he finds another kill here, this will take him to a 4-0 lead with only a few minutes left on the clock as well. So it's a horrible position to be in for Zenaku unless he really starts to bite back. And he needs to bite back ASAP. 
He just, he needs to get a good opening confrontation, do a decent amount of damage, and then just go in. Use that slash speed to your advantage, just jump on your opponent, pounce down on the slash, and just put yourself on the board. That's how he's gotta approach this. I like that he made a different move to get out of heavy room, at least earlier, right? No, so I was waiting for him at the top of the bounce out with LG at the ready, but uh, Zeneku was prepared for that, didn't make the same mistake. But he's got to do damage, he's got to get some frags on the board, and he's got to do it quickly, too. Coming up to the 8-minute mark now. Zeneku, we need some aggression. He needs to go in and really try and initiate here. Instead, he's still just getting booped. As the Railgun oh. comes out, and the Railgun is looking absolutely splendid. Finally, some damage, putting Zeneku into a good position. Nosfa inches away from his demise, but Mega comes back up. He's able to grab it, and he can just run out of there with his tail between his legs. A stalemate from a position that could have given Zeneku his opening kill. And that's one of the risks of playing a light champion, right? You saw at the opening, Nosfa lands one rail. And all of a sudden, the stacks, they're in Osu's favor, even yeah. though it was Zeneku who was in control. And then the moment he lands that second one, you know that Zeneku needs a miracle to be able to get out of that one alive. And he did, but he surrenders control. He surrendered to Mega. He's losing a lot of health right now. And with a minute and 30 seconds left, what can he do on the Slash? It's a good champ if you want to try and play fast and furious. But unfortunately, right now, the reviews are not looking good for Zeneku. Rockets just storming across as well from Nosfa. He just needs to play delay tactics, try and take this one slow, and he should walk away as the victor with a free, well, a free map win. Seneku, that need, that was the opportunity. That was it. He did a lot of damage to Nosa. Maybe he wasn't fully aware of just how low his opponent was, but that he needed to drop right there. He had a little over a minute left. Drop with the shotgun, drop with the rockets. That's what you gotta do. You can't keep dancing around on the ledge and as your opponent just makes his way out of the room because now 45 seconds left for free frags. I don't know about this one, man. It's such a shame as well, because we know that his aim is really good, but he's just playing too timidly. There's just no semblance of him wanting to initiate. Here Finally, we go. you delve in, but with 30 seconds left on the clock, can you really string another two kills together? He's gonna fight him off the bat, though. Here we go, LG's looking solid as well. He knows that Nosefa oh. doesn't have a rocket left, doesn't have a shotgun, but he drops down on the shaft! Sanaku, five points of health. Can he find the rail? It'll Ooh. still be a kill. Here we go. 10 seconds, but he needs to find his opponents right off the bat, and he's got no health to work with. No, so he's not even gonna move. No, so he's just up there at the shotgun. He's just chilling. Yeah, he's just gonna wait it out. He's like, I'm gonna set up my camp here, and bye bye as I take home the free zero. GG's indeed. Oh, Zeneku, I loved the final pushes, but why wait until 9 minutes 30 seconds to do that? Why didn't you do that at like 3 minutes, 4, 5? Oh, he gave himself the smallest time period to do the tallest order, yeah. and he nearly made it happen. That rail was absolutely miraculous. That yeah. was literally a godsend gifted to him to try and get him back into the game. But with five seconds left, what are you going to do? Even just holding on that respawn as well, you waste a bit of extra time. There's nothing that can go on. He physically didn't move. And even if he had found no fight, so still debatable whether he would have won, right? He had 30 points of health coming around the corner as Nosefa was waiting for him. Yeah, I really... It, you can't fault Seneku too much, right? Because obviously it's his first week in the Quake Pro League. He, yeah, yeah. Th this is a different order from what he's used to, clearly. But on the other hand, he's got some things to work on. I think that's very obvious. He just wasn't aggressive enough when he had the upper hand failed to capitalize on too many of the opportunities that he had and just his predictability I feel like is holding him back a lot. Nosa had him read like an open book minutes into each map and I feel like we did too. Yeah, that's that's the biggest problem is it seemed like it was the consistency of the plays. So after a, a couple of minutes into the game, Nosfa was just like, okay, I know your rotations, I know how you're going to play around these major items, and I know your escape routes. And when it got to that point, there was just nothing that could be done. Nosfa just avoided every engagement that he didn't feel like he'd have the advantage going into, but it very systematic, very clean. It was some clinical quake from Nosfa. Oh yeah, Nosfa definitely coming into Stage 3 with a very strong showing. After a disappointing performance at the Stage 2 Finals, he's really come out swinging again. He's making his mark. This is a statement saying, watch out. I know that this was a mistake, but I'm back and I'm going to be better than ever.
Yeah, well, a fantastic matchup there with Nosfa getting the full 3 0. So, a ridiculously big injection of points going straight into his leaderboard standings because points are doubled and it all is to play for, and he's decimated against Seneku there. So, that is really going to do a lot for him this season if he can maintain it. But at least it's a good way to start things off here in week one. Deja vu, however, deja who. We're going to be moving on to our second game of the night. If you joined us at the start of the show, you might have seen we were teasing Cypher versus Cooler. That game is now ready, and we're going to be coming in with that after the break. For now, though, grab yourself a drink, refresh, chill out a little bit, and we'll be back in with the king taking on Cypher. <laughs> 